Hey everyone, today I've got a new free AI video generator. I know that this is something that a lot of you have been looking for since Pico went into a paid tier system, and this is the best one I have run across yet in that class. Plus, we're gonna take a look at another free tool. This one is an image upscaler that kind of does the magnific thing only for free. And finally, a new video upscaler that will remaster up to 8K. This one's not free, but it is the first one that I've seen that gives Topaz Video a run for its money and it is way cheaper. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off, we have a new AI video generator called Pixverse. This one is free for now, at least. I mean, I presume they're not doing this out of charity. At some point or another, there will be paid plans. So hop in while you got the chance. To get started with Pixverse, obviously we just sign up. Pixverse currently has text to video and image to video, uh, a prompt section, a negative prompt section, three different stylizers in realistic anime and 3D animation, and supports a number of different aspect ratios. So it does lack some of those bells and whistles that we've seen in Pika and Gen 2, namely camera motion controls and in and out painting. I do expect that those features or something like them will be rolled in at some point or another, but you know, hey, in the meantime, it is free. So starting off with an image to video test, which is the thing that I think most of you tend to be the most interested in, I took this Mid Journey V6 image and brought it in. Leaving everything at default yields us this, which does look really good. Yeah, it does have that kind of AI parallax, you know, uh, character movement look with the eyes having that Mona Lisa gaze of just staring directly at you, but it does look really, really good. The smoke effects do look very nice and realistic, and there's very little morphing going on. The one thing I was expecting to see was like this earring kind of like, you know, morphing larger, smaller, uh, but no, it, it holds pretty consistent all the way through. So yeah, really well done. The video exports at 1024 by 576, but there also is this upscale button, which you can run, comes in at a whopping 496 by 2304. So that's a pretty significant size. When you punch in on the upscale, you'll definitely see kind of a more animated, uh, uh, kind of painted look on the model that's, you know, a byproduct obviously of upscaling to that size. If you don't like that look, I would say definitely upscale your video and then just scale it down to 1080. Taking a look at some shots from the community feed that I thought were pretty good. Uh, this one is apparently Seth Green staring at an eclipse. Uh, overall, I really like it. The diversity of movement in the background characters feels like, you know, fairly natural. There is a little bit of warping going on with this guy as he crosses behind Seth Green, but I think that if this were a fast enough shot, you really wouldn't notice that. Here's another one that really impressed me. It has that analog 80s sci-fi vibe to it, um, but the parallaxing outside of the cockpit, I mean, that really looks very good. Another shot that I liked was this kind of you know, classic era film inspired shot with the prompt raindrops falling. I'll note that there was no prompt for them to start kissing, which means the bot is just a romantic at heart. Now I will say that there is definitely some warping and morphing going on as the noses come together, but uh, for the most part, actually it looks pretty good. Definitely a few months ago, this would have looked like an outtake from John Carpenter's The Thing. Finally, this shot really did catch my eye. There's a lot of movement in here. The smoke looks really good. Uh, and you know, you've got a lot of characters walking. Now granted, they are kind of doing the sort of zombie shuffle, but I think that if you were to lean into that and create some, you know, zombie apocalypse shots in this kind of documentary style, it would look pretty cool. We'll talk a little bit more about motion in just a minute, but first I wanted to swing over to text to video, starting off with the ultimate Turing test of AI text to video, the Smith test or Will Smith eating spaghetti. So I'm sure most of you have seen it, but just in case you haven't, and it's always worth re-watching, Will Smith eating spaghetti was a very early AI text to video test that kind of, you know, caught fire. Selling this aside, the Smith spaghetti test actually is a very good indicator of how coherent an AI video model can be. You have Will Smith, a face that, you know, everyone in the world knows. Spaghetti, which is a pain to render in any artistic medium, and then eating and chewing, which, you know, obviously can get pretty horrific in AI video. So I would not say that Pixverse nailed it, but it is pretty good. Uh, the prompt here was Will Smith eating spaghetti, fork into mouth, chewing with negative prompts of morphing, deformed face, deformed hands, extra limbs, and long neck. I will note that that result was cherry picked out of a number of previous roles where it didn't work. We had this one that is just static. 
And then this one, which was actually, in all honesty, probably my favorite. I mean, that's super surreal. So yes, kind of a fail on the Will Smith test. That's okay. I don't know of any AI text to video generator that has passed the Smith test as of yet. So moving on, uh, this is a test prompt that I like to run a lot that is sort of inspired by George Millay's Trip to the Moon crossed with music video director Chris Cunningham. Uh, yeah, this one came out pretty cool. Moving over to an old chestnut of the channel. Uh, anyone who's watched more than one video of mine knows the man in the blue business suit. Uh, so this is medium shot, chest and face, man in a blue business suit, walking down a city street, smiling, sunglasses. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. It does have sort of a weird feeling of being green screened or comped, like the background definitely feels like it's on a dolly. The movement is a little bit weird on our man in the blue business suit. I will say that in terms of current AI video, that kind of like medium shot is generally the way to go as walking always looks a little bit uh, weird and weightless. We'll take a look at a few examples of that coming up in just a minute. But first, I did want to show off the same shot under the 3D animation preset. This is with a different seed. I don't know about you guys, but I saw this guy and like the first thing that popped into my head was like, Ned? Ned Ryerson? I don't know, maybe it's just because he's got like a really punchable face. And here he is again under the anime preset, which looks really good and he knows it. So moving back over to full body walking shots. Yes, this does tend to be a problem in any AI video generator. For example, taking this image, very much inspired by the upcoming Amazon TV show, Fallout, really, really looking forward to that. Uh, anyhow, bringing that in and trying to you know animate it tends to end up in results like this where yeah, it is working, but it's just kind of a mess. To be totally fair, even Pika does not do a stellar job with this. Um, you know, the movement is a little bit weird and wonky. Um, and then the dog, you know, just takes a seat and just starts scooting along. I know what that means. And it's fine as long as he's not doing it on the carpet. One thing I did stumble across while experimenting around with this is that you kind of do have camera controls with Pics first. Uh, namely, I was trying to get a no walking here, uh, although she does end up taking a step forward. But by prompting camera pan, we did actually get camera movement. So although we don't have fully featured camera controls like Gen 2 or Pika, um, you can still end up getting camera movement out of it. You just simply have to prompt for it. Once again, Pixverse is completely free. So, you know, head on over and start experimenting. Moving on to an AI image upscaler that kind of does the Magnific thing. And listen, I don't want to harp on it too much. Yes, I know Magnific is expensive. I do advocate for free trials and reduced cost. Just the other day in a tweet, I I'd said that the comments on cost and the lack of a trial dominate the feedback that I get. So this clearly is an issue. I also mentioned that the price point is a big leap of faith for people and that's totally valid. Javi at Magnific did respond with, I think we'll be more confident about GPU costs negotiating that already. So perhaps by voicing our concerns, we have managed to reduce the cost somewhat. Uh, in the meantime, Crea.ai does have a free AI image creative upscaler. Is that what we're calling it? That doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, does it? So I did look at this upscaler a while back, but Crea has updated the model and it looks really good. So starting off with this kind of lower res, slightly fuzzier image of a cyberpunk woman standing on a street. This image was actually generated using Crea's real-time generator, the thing where you draw a sketch and then it basically generates based off of the prompt that you give it. So one thing I think is pretty neat about Kriya's model is that you'll take your reference image, drop it in, and then you'll see the prompt will actually start auto-generating for you. So it's kind of neat. Uh, from there, you have a few different styles to choose from. Um, we'll start off with photorealistic and then sliders with the AI strength. So this is how much the model is going to hallucinate over your base image. The resemblance strength, which obviously controls how much of the output resembles your original input, and then the upscaling factor. So this only goes up to an upscale factor of two. Though I suppose you could actually take that output and then re-input it in and then, you know, upscale another two. So cranking all the sliders up because I very much am a turn it to 11 kind of guy, yields us this, which looks really good. I mean, we asked for photorealistic, we definitely got photorealistic. Uh, yeah, that looks 
really pretty nice. And just because I know someone in the comments will ask, this is the same image upscaled in Magnific. Uh, I don't wanna turn this into a shootout or anything. Um, those are both the images you guys can discuss amongst yourselves. Heading back over to Korea, and since we used our man in the blue business suit in the last segment, I figured let's just break out all the recurring characters. So once again, our old friend, Dutch football player, Daniela Van Den Ankh, dressed as a pirate. Again, this looks nothing like the actual Daniela Van Den Ankh. Uh, running it through Korea with the photorealistic preset, and then once again, the AI strength cranked up to 100. Uh, yeah, it looks really good with her, although you do end up with like these weird uh, kind of hallucinations where we start seeing like hands appearing in various places. Um, yeah, super surreal. So the AI strength slider is something that you will definitely want to play around with. Again, because Korea currently at least is free, I mean, experiment to your heart's content. I mean, I will say minus the weird hands in the background, this does look really, really good. So yeah. Kudos, Kriya. Sliding over to the video side of things, one of the things that you guys have been asking quite a bit for is a video upscaler that is not Topaz video. At $299, there is no question Topaz is on the pricier side. Now that said, it is software and you know it is a one-time, you buy it, you own it kind of situation. So there is that. That said, if you have been looking for a more affordable alternative, we now have PixOp. PixOp pretty much does all of the stuff that Topaz does, though kind of more of an a la carte fashion. So just to give you an idea of how much PixOp might run you, uh, say if you did an AI generated trailer somewhere around three minutes, which is actually kind of long for an AI video, um, and you were to run the deep restoration and super resolution models on it, uh, that total would end up being $6.04. Now granted, that's coming in with a 25% off discount in your first month. So we are gonna take a look at a comparison between PixOp and Topaz in just a second. But first, um, I did wanna walk you through the PixOp uh, options. So taking our shot from PixVerse and bringing it into PixOp, Sorry, where is my mind? There's a lot of pixies in here. Once we have it imported, we can then assign a number of processes to it. It actually gives you a score too. Um, in this one, apparently we are scoring high in noise, but fairly middling in details and in colors. So taking it and running it under the HQ input enhanced UHD 4K preset, we do have a number of other options such as saving it out as a Apple ProRes or as uh, H.265. Color space profiles, if you don't know what any of this stuff is, just leave it on the default. We can also change the bit rate, um, change the scanning from progressive to interlaced. Again, if you don't know what that is, just leave it on auto. And there are some pretty interesting presets down here, uh, such as an augmenter face forward uh, that will relight your face. Um, you can give it a color boost and even kind of bouquet your background more. So taking a look at our upscales, and this is always kind of a tricky thing to do considering that you know, you're looking at 4K upscales through you know, YouTube compression. And then on top of it, I only upload in 1080 because well, frankly, I just don't feel like juggling a bunch of 4K material. So I do have each of these video files available to you over on Gumroad so you can download them and, you know, pick them apart on your own systems and monitors. Uh, obviously they are completely free. Although as always, you are welcome to leave a donation if you so choose. Never feel obligated though. So this begins with the Pixiverse native 4K upscale. This is Topaz's 4K upscale. And finally, PixOps 4K upscale. And finally, just to give you an idea of exactly how much of an upscale this is, this is the initial output out of Pixiverse. So yeah, while I know that upscaling is not always the most exciting thing in the world, particularly since we haven't brought in like, you know, creativity hallucination sliders to video yet, but it often is necessary to bring that final polish to your overall project. So if something like Topaz has been out of your price range for a while, uh, PixOp might be a solution for you. I will say, obviously, because Topaz is running locally, that is much faster. I would say that one shot round trip, uploading it to PixOp, having it ingested and then kicked back out was probably a 10 minute process round trip. So if you were thinking about using PixOp, I might suggest kind of either batching your files into one timeline or just upscaling entire projects. The link for PixOp is down below. And I guess that's it for me today. So two free things, one paid thing. That's not a bad ratio, right? I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.